Should we give Jesus some praise real quick? Let's give Jesus some praise. All right, now have a seat real quick. I, I, I got to just real quickly, um, I wasn't nervous to preach until I walked up to my seat and I saw one of the generals in the faith, somebody who shaped my life, somebody who is a pastor still to me, and his beautiful wife is pastor to my wife as well. And I don't know if you know this, but you're sitting in a room with a general in the faith, and that is Pastor Jerry and Susan Quillen right here on the front row. So I, 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 it's funny, Pastor, I got to tell you something. So I didn't know you were here. Uh, Pastor Elliot did tell me uh, you were going to make it, but I saw the weather. I didn't know it was going to happen. And I'm standing in the back, and I'm doing worship. Worship was just phenomenal. And I felt like I was supposed to do something, and I'm going to do it. But it was confirmation when I walked up here, and I saw you and Susan here. I was like, now I really, really, I know this is the Lord. I know this is the Lord, so I just need you to go with me just for a second. So uh, you can open your Bibles already to the book of Acts chapter 10 and just hold it there because we're going to do something that I, I really feel is actually divinely providential. And so um, I don't know if you know this or not, but you are at a four square church. It's a full gospel church. It's a charismatic church, which means one of the tenets of faith that we have is the laying on of hands. And we believe in the laying on of hands, especially from apostolic, uh, apostolic leaders as a transference of an anointing. If you're not familiar with the term apostolic, you can Google that later, okay? But just realize that with the apostolic anointing, there's a certain level. God never calls you out. He calls you up. Okay? He doesn't call you out. He calls you up. And what I mean by that is he doesn't just pick on your sin to pick on your sin. He reveals your sin so he can call you up to the next level so that you can deal with that sin and get to where he wants you, okay? So just realize that right now that, that when we do these types of things, it's, it's not to pick on anybody. It's not to, uh, you know, point anything out. What it is, is is God is doing something. And one of the ways God calls us up is through the laying on of hands. And so there's something that happens when that, when that takes place. It's a supernatural thing. It's not supposed to be articulated with fancy words. It's supposed to be demonstrated by the power of the Holy Spirit. So there's a big difference. Okay. And so when I'm back there, Pastor uh, Quillen, I'm going to need your help with this. Um, you and Susan, I just really felt that, uh, you know, Elliot and Tiffany are, are moving into a new season. There's a, there's a new level that they're rising into. There's, there's this grace and this covering that is coming over them in this season. They're, um, if I could put it to you this way, uh, Pastor, it, it's, they're coming from a young Timothy that was following Paul on his missionary journeys and to the older Timothy who's taken over an established church that Paul planted. So I feel like that should happen. So I would like to invite you guys to come on up here. Pastor Susan, please, if you wouldn't mind, can we just pray over them in this new season? Can we just anoint them? And, and, and two things, church, that I just need you to be a witness to. Okay, two things. And I knew I was prepared because I brought my anointing oil from Israel, just so you know. I've been trying to take your pastor. Yeah, I've been trying to take your pastor to Israel for two years now. But every time he plans on going with me, something happens over there. So, so it is. It's a very sore subject with him. So, so. Uh, but I, I can tell you stories. I've been there plenty of times. So, but I just felt like um, I didn't mean to rub it in. I'm telling you. So I, I feel like pastor that that with you and Susan being here as generals in the faith and the apostolic anointing that's on your life and the pastors that you've sent out, I just feel like in this season that they're headed into, it reminds me of when I first went to Victor. They're from Modesto, Victor Life Center in Modesto. And so I, I, they remind me of, of, of Mandy and myself when we first got there and how you would send out pastors and that anointing that was on your life, the growth, the transference of the supernatural, what happens, the miracles, all that. I just feel like I would love with with you and Susan to pray. I, and, and I'm not, listen, listen, that's not a knock on the pastors that they took the church over from. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking that. But I'm saying in front of you all, witnesses, as a body of believers, I just want to lay hands. And if we could lead them in a prayer. And then I'll start. And then the pastor, if you want to close. Or Susan, if you get a word, whatever. But I just want to, in front of God's people, just believe for this new season. But you guys can hold hands like you love each other. Okay, there you go. Yep. Yep, just like that. And that's scented, that's scented holy oil from the motherland right there. There you go. I know. I got gotcha. you. Frankincense and myrrh. I know it's not Christmas. All right. If you guys wouldn't mind, stand to your feet. Can you put a little background music on, please? And let's stretch your hands forward. And I'll hand you the mic. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for Elliot and Tiffany right now. I thank you, Father God, that something is happening. Father, there's a new season. I thank you for everything you're doing right here, right now. I thank you for this for these young Timothys in the house, Father God, and what they're stirring and what they're doing. Lord, we thank you that there is something taking place. But even by Pastor being here and Susan being here, Lord, there's something taking place, Father God. There's, there's almost a generation anointing of how Pastor reached his city in Modesto, how I'm reaching Fresno, but how Ellie and Tiffany are going to reach Lodi and beyond, Father God, that there's a bear witness moment going on here amongst the congregation, and we thank you, Father God. We bless what you're doing here now, Lord. We thank you for these witnesses that are witnessing what is going on right here, right now, that there's actually a maturation going on. There's a maturing process going on. There's a Timothy, Father God, getting ready to take these reins and take this church to every place you want it to be, Father, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing, what you're stirring up. We validate the man and woman of God right here, right now, and everything you want to do. We thank you that you've called them to be the leaders and the head of this church. We know that you're the head of the Capital C Church, but you call them to be the shepherds of this church here in Lifeline, Father. Hallelujah. Father, Father, Father. Lord, open the doors of window of heaven and pour out upon them, Father. Pour out upon them, Father. For, Lord, they are. They are your children, appointed children. And, Father, they are, they are your investment. Your investment. And, Father, the doors of heaven are open to them. This church is in its new beginning. Yes. In its new beginning. Hallelujah. I hear the Spirit say, focus. Focus. Do not be distracted. Do not be pulled to the right or to the left. Don't be moved by people's faces, but stay focused. Hear me and obey me. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Speak clearly to them, Jesus, and help them hear you and obey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hora la ba satan dara la ba si. Even doors that have been closed before, knock again. Knock again. Yep, they're being opened again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ask largely. Ask largely and then ask bigger than that. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Can we give it up for the Lord? Come on. Come on. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate you. Can we get the house lights? You guys can be seated. Yes. Yes. What a what a moment right there. I just want to see everybody's faces. My cousin's over here, so I want to be able to see their face. If we can get those lights on. Yeah, brighter, brighter. Like, let me see everybody. I loved it. I, I, I get up on stage and those, those lights are so bright sometimes. I'm like, man, I can't see anybody. I see yellow and pink polka dots. And every now and then I'll spot like a Niner fan out there somewhere. Oh, I'm not a Niner fan at all. Don't, don't, don't get excited. Not at all. I'm debating on who I hate more, the Chiefs or the Niners. So it says, it says I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I got to go for the Niners. You know what I mean? So good to see you guys. Well, Pastor Elliot, thank you so much, you and Tiffany, for having me. And I just, I just got to say, uh, you know, what an honor to have Pastor Quillen and Susan here. Um, somebody was asking me the other day, Pastor, they said, how do you know how to follow the Spirit so well? I said, Jerry Quillen. 
And they said, who? I said, don't worry about it. It, it means something to you one day. It's like, pastor here was so pivotal uh, in, my, in my shaping of spiritual formation. Uh, the man can flow in the spirit like nobody's business. And so when I got to Modesto, my wife's originally from Modesto. She'd be here. But pastor, I, I got to tell you the story. I, I mean, I don't want to take up too much time, but my house is a wreck right now. And I don't mean a wreck as a wreck. I mean as a wreck. A main water line busted. My master bedroom's flooded. I got workers in and out. I mean, it's just nuts right now. So I, I, I barely left home. Be, well, I've lived in a hotel for 40 days now. So kids are in one place. That's not bad. But the wife and I are in another. That's actually good. But uh, so we're all over the place right now. Um, anyway, uh, my wife is from Modesto. I went to work for Pastor Quillen in 97. 97, 97, that's when I went. And I'd have fired me, Pastor, just so you know, I'd have fired me. I don't know if you thought about firing me, but I'd have fired me. Uh, it, it probably would have thumped me upside the head. If, I don't know if you thought about that either, but I'd have done both. I'd have thumped me and then fired me. But uh, I, I tell you what, um, I, I, I realize now that I was a very opinionated, stubborn, hard-headed, you can stop me anytime, uh, you know, uh, bullheaded, driven, ambitious. You could have stopped me anytime, Pastor. Uh, oh, you just keep going? <laughs> so... Uh, uh, but one thing, one thing I did, I did work hard. I did work hard. Never, you never had to check in on me, that's for sure, because I, I wanted the things of the Lord. So I thank him. And, and, and Su- I think Susan, Pastor Susan, is the only reason I kept my job. So I think there's plenty of times he came in trying to fire me. And she was like, just, just give him one more year. Just give him one more year, Pastor Quillen. Just give him one more year. And so I thank, I thank you guys for being here. And thank you so much for the spiritual formation in my life. I appreciate it. Love you guys. So open your Bibles to Acts chapter 10. So I want to give you a concept real quick. I want to give you a concept real quick. And here's the concept. We're all going to grow old. I turned 48 this year. Did you believe that? 48. I know. where the time fly? My gosh. Feels like yesterday, right? 48 years old this year. I will have been married 28 years this year. So it happens when you meet your wife in junior high. You decide to get married in high school. You just, the years keep passing. So I've been married 28 years. I'll be 48 years old. And I realized that Growing old is not optional. That's going to happen. You know, you're going to turn another year older if you haven't already. It's going to happen to the best of us. Mentally, I still feel like 25, but I do realize I'm 48. My body's telling me that. But uh, growing old is not optional, but growing up is. You got people who are literally, you know, 50 years old, 55 years old, but in certain aspects of their life, they still act 15, 16. You know, you got people who may be 50, but when it comes to their finances, they're 12. Right, you got people who are 50, but when it comes to their dating life, they're 17. We won't go into, that's not where I'm going, but I'm just saying. So you realize that growing old is not optional, but growing up is. And in the church, when it comes to being a disciple, that's going to have to be intentional. In order to be a disciple, it's got to be intentional. In other words, your spiritual formation isn't just going to happen. It's kind of like weight loss. Nobody ever just wakes up and goes, oh my gosh, I lost 10 pounds. Isn't that incredible? Now, if that is you, let's trade a little bit of blood here, and let me see if that works for me, because I'd love for that to happen, but that doesn't happen, right? And don't you wish somebody could go work out for you, and you reap the benefits? Sign me up for that program right there, right? That'd be real good. Like, hey, bro, you need to work out a little harder. I need to take off, like, 17 more pounds, all right? I need you to step up your game. It doesn't work, right? You got to put in the hard work. Discipleship is going to be what you put into it. It's going to be what you put into it. So uh, I was, uh, as a church, we, we go through books of the Bible together. And I was in the book of Acts, and God began to download a message, a message in my heart. Now, now, now listen, I know we're in the new year, and I know in everybody's top five, for the most part, right, still up there every year, top five, is people want to lose weight during the new year. How many know what I'm talking about, right? And, and, and listen, listen, I, I, I'm Mexican, okay? So December's always a hard month. December's a hard month because it's tamale season. How many know what I'm talking about? Okay, where are, my, where are my pork tamale fans at right here? Pork tamales, where are you at? Okay, where are my beef tamales at? There ain't no other such thing as any other type of tamale, okay? Don't let them, don't let them trick you. Don't let them do the queso ones, the jalapeno ones. No, 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 no. There's only two. Okay, anyway. So it's hard in December. People want to feed you. Then there's tamales. And then for us, uh, we do. Oh, by the way, I, I will share this with you. I know this won't mean nothing to you, but I, I told him because of what he did. Everywhere I go, I'll always tell the story. My homie, uh, Miguel Pardo, he made brisket tamales. Uh, no, 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 no. True story. I thought I went to heaven. I did right, 
Right in the moment, I took the first bite. And remember, who's old school members of the Calgon uh, commercials take me away? How many remember? That, that just aged you, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're in the same boat. We're good. It's not the end. We're good. Okay. So I, 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 I took one bite, and I literally, I felt my soul go to heaven. And it came back down to take another bite. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> amazing. And so, long story short, long story short, uh, when we get into the new year, I realized that a big thing is to always lose weight. So I'm doing my devotional, and God literally downloads and deposits into me that he wants me to intentionally build up fat disciples. I go, Lord, it's the new year. Nobody wants to hear about being fat. Like, you know, like, like really? Fat disciples? And, and, and no, it's not the P-H-A-T. It really is F-A-T. Like fat disciples, like this year, God wants you to put on spiritual weight because some of you are a little famished. And I'm not talking like muscular. I'm talking like famished, like you haven't eaten. And so I want to take you through what God downloaded to me in Acts chapter 10. Okay, now, those of you who've known me before, you've known my journey. I I just met somebody who talked to me, uh, and I'm going to weave my story in and out. But uh, the last four years... Boy, did I, do I have a story for you. It's, it's, I, I'm telling you right now, it's nuts, okay? Like, uh, I never knew I'd make national news uh, headlines. I got tweeted out by famous people. In my city, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I went to hell and back. I went from death to life, from life to death, back to life. It's crazy. If you want to hear any of that story, you want to follow along and, and go back to review and to get caught up, I have a podcast that I started during the whole thing. Um, it's called the Not Offended Podcast. It's going to come up on the board. You could just take that QR code. So one of the things that got put in my heart when we were going through everything we were going through, I was public enemy number one in my city. So like I was, I was on the paper, on news, everything. I'd walk into the gym and my face would be on all the screens. And I was like, okay, can we bring masks back? Can I just cover myself? And so we started this podcast because I realized that we got to have prophets. We got to have people who talk about culture and the influence on the church. We got to talk about how culture is trying to come in and trying to change the church instead of the church setting the culture. So that's the whole thing of the podcast. There's a lot of humor in it. It's called Not Offended because we talk about everything that offends people. So if you're an easily offended person, do not tune in, okay? Do not tune in. If you're not an easily offended person, you're going to have the laughs of your life, okay? So... Acts chapter 10. I want to show you the, uh, the, the acrostic or acronym that we're going to use is FAT stands for Faithful, Available, and Teachable. Faithful, Available, and Teachable. So you got to understand that it, we're going to be intentional about being a disciple. And if we're going to be intentional about being a disciple, there are certain things, attributes, demarcations, if I may, that we have to have in order to really achieve what God is calling us to do. And I came across Acts chapter 10, and it's, it, it's a part, we went through the whole book of Acts in November and December um, in, our, in, our, in our Bible study time. Right now we're in the book of Ezekiel. And in Acts chapter 10, I think you guys might be familiar with this. This is the story of Cornelius. And in this story, I want to just point out a couple things. So if you want to take notes, you can take notes. The first letter we're starting off with is the letter F in the word fat, and it stands for faithful. It stands for faithful. And so we're going to open up God's word. Acts chapter 10, we're going to read the first eight verses. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion. I have the NIV. This should be the NLT version right here on my paper, okay? So if it looks a little different. It says this. There's a centurion known as, uh, excuse me, as Cornelius. He was in charge of the Italian regiment. I'm going to point something out that I don't know if you've ever seen before. This this is going to blow your mind. Look at what it says. He and his family were all devout, God-fearing people. Now, you got to understand that the word Christian had not been introduced yet. If you were a Christ follower, you were called on the way, or they called you a God-fearer. They called you a God-fearer. So what they're saying is this man was a Christian before he was a Christian. Does that make sense? So in other words, he had a very Jewish approach to his Christian belief. Does this make sense? So, And, and I'm going I'm to prove that to you because I'm going to show you something that unless you understand Jewish tradition, you're not going to see what he was actually doing. Okay, so just follow with me. Look at what it says. He gave gener- uh, generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Okay, now what does that mean? So if, if we were a part of a Jewish synagogue right now, tithing is never 10%. It's north of 20. You have tithes, you have offerings, you have special offerings, you have first seeds, you have first fruits. There's so many things. There's a temple tax. There's all these things that you do, okay? 
Now, when it says he prayed regularly, if you're a good Jew, if, if you're an Orthodox Jew, a practicing Jew, you must do the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai, 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 Echad, right? So you must do the Shema. Six in the morning, nine in the morning, noon, three, six. So you're always praying. These are your prayer times, okay? If you're following anything that's going on over right now in Israel, you'll see the, they'll take videos of the IDF doing the Shema, right? Okay, so... I want you to, I've, I've told you, this is what he's, he's praying regularly at these times. He's following these prayer practices. How do I know that? Next verse, look at what it says. One day about what time? Three in the afternoon. That was the time they pray. And by the way, if you're going to pray correctly, you got to pray towards the east. You must always pray towards Israel. You must always pray towards temple. Even when I'm in Israel, I face east. I pray directly to where the temple used to be. Okay, does this make sense? So this is what he's doing. Uh, three demarcations. Number one, he gives generously. Number two, he prays regularly. Number three, he practices his faith. There's an orthopraxy to his orthodoxy. Is that, okay, is that, is that over here? Okay, cookies bottom shelf. The way he practices, there's a way he walks that proves he practices what he believes. Oh, you see that? So they're just not a fair weather fan. Some of you are just Niner fans because they ain't a Super Bowl, but I ain't saying none. Okay. <laughs> some, some of you stuck through that three-game losing streak. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, here we go. Okay, look at what it says. And one day, an angel, an angel of God came to him and said, okay, now, let's, let's pay very close attention. Look at this. Cornelius stared at him, stared at him in fear and said, what is it, Lord? And he asked, and the angel answered, look at this now. Look at what the angel points out. Your prayers and your gifts to the poor. Do you see that? Did I, I didn't make that up, did I? Did I make that up or is that in there? Okay, you should have your Bible open. I didn't make that up. So in other words, can I just present something to you real quickly? God listens to your prayers and he watches your giving. Anybody else get like that Mufasa fear right there? Woo. Right? Like, like, got a little nervous. <laughs> and, 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 and so, listen, listen, listen. For all of you who like to study the Bible, how else do you explain what the angel just pointed out? How else do you explain what the angel pointed out? I'm not making this up. This is, why is it in your Bible? He literally points out, hey, we're, we're listening to your prayers, and God is watching your giving. All right, well, all right, let's keep going. It says this. He says, Cornelius, God is, he, he, your prayers and gifts to the poor Look at what it says, have come up to heaven as a memorial offering before God. Okay, if you want to write something down, you can write this down. Prayers don't evaporate, they accumulate. Mm, good. Good. Okay, prayers don't evaporate. Okay, go back to the book of Revelation. It says that all the prayers were kept into the bowl, kept into a bowl. And when the bowl was full, what happened? It tipped over as an offering unto the Lord. Some of you haven't prayed enough because the moment you pray enough, it'll tip over and the Lord will answer. Okay, that was free. Not even in here, just all free. Okay, okay. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When they, I'll take you there. I'll take you there, okay, to the house. By, the house is still there. I will take you there. I've told you that 10 times, I know, but I'm gonna take you there. Okay, I'll let you do a little devotional when we get there, okay. So when the angel of the Lord spoke to him, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of the attendants, and he told them everything that happened, and he sent them to Joppa to go get Peter. Okay. So, we're starting off with the word faithful. If you don't like the word faithful, I just want to give you a synonym. I'm, I just, I just want to give you another word that you could throw on. Your consistency. Your consistency. Okay, your consistency. Your consistency will trump everything else. Your consistency will trump your motivation. Your consistency will, tr will trump your drive. If you can just stay consistent, everything else will always pick back up. At the end of the day, it's the consistent person who wins at the end of the day because they just keep going and they keep going. Uh, I have a... Uh, when everything was going on in, in, in 2021, I was like public enemy number one in my city. Uh, that's a long story. They called me like super spreader, COVID killer, baby killer. I was like the killer of all killers. And so anyway, uh, the FBI, I had a guy uh, who, who worked for a secret service detail. And so long story short, he comes up to me and he goes, hey, you know, like you're plastered everywhere. You're, you're, you're a prime target. He goes, we, we really just got to take a look at everything to make sure nobody takes you out. I'm like, take me out? Why would you want to take me out? I'm a lovable guy. And so anyway, so he rides around with me one day and this he works secret service, secret service detail. Like he just came from DC. Uh, he got restationed over in Fresno and long story short, he understands all this. Right. And so he rides around with me for the whole day. I'm going back and forth to campuses. I'm doing all this stuff. And then today, you know what he tells me? 
He goes, yo, pastor. I said, what's good? He goes, you're the easiest person to kill. <laughs> I'm like, son, was that supposed to be encouraging? Like, like, was that supposed to be, oh, let's go get tacos now? Like, what does that mean? He goes, you're the most predictable person I've ever met. Like, predictable. And I started thinking, I'm predictable. Like, I, like I'm, so, I'm so regimented that my regimen is regimented. <laughs> like, 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 my wife don't even need it. You, you, you know, on, the, on, on, on your phone, like, you could do the whole, like, tracking thing. My wife don't even need to track me. From this time to this time, I'm here. From this time to this time, I'm here. And from this time to this time, I'm here. And from this time, like, it is so bad. I am so consistent in everything I do. Like, bam. Like, it's seven days a week, same thing every day. Bam, consistent. And then he says to me, you're easily, you're, we can kill you very easily. And I'm like, have you done this before? <laughs> like, I know I'm like a priest. Is there a confession coming? <laughs> I put this in my notes that if you do something on a regular basis, irregular things start to happen. So in other words, now, 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 now catch this, catch this. I've never had this moment like Cornelius, where I'm just chilling in my room, and I'm praying, and an angel shows up. Now, now for those of you who like to study the Bible, I'm going to give you a little nugget. You can just, you can just check this out. Every time an angel shows up, you know what the first words out of his mouth are? Fear not. Okay, no, 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 no. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm only saying that because you're going to meet preachers on TV for $39.99, Okay. And <laughs> you caught that joke. Good, thanks. So you're going to meet preachers on TV. And, there, and an angel came. And I'm like, you wasn't scared? <laughs> Everybody I see in the Bible, when an angel shows up, they're like, whoa! And fear not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you like that one? Okay. Sorry, 80s jokes. If y'all ain't getting it, I'm sorry. I'm an 80s baby. Okay. So, so every time there's an angel showing up, they're like, fear not. Okay. But you got people on TV. Yeah, and the angel came and talked to me. And you wasn't scared? It wasn't an angel. No, because every time I see him, could you imagine, you just, you just, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I do my Devo every morning. I'm chilling. If an angel just popped up next to the seat, next to me, woohoo! Fear not. Yeah, I'm scared. I don't care what you say. I'm scared, right? Okay. So I'm telling you all this. I'm just trying to give you little nuggets, right? And when I think about this consistency, I think about habits. Okay, you want to write this down. It's pointless to have uphill goals and downhill habits. Did you catch that? Yeah. Meet people all the time. Meet people all the time. Hey, I'm trying to do X, Y, Z in the gym. I said, okay, now watch. I say, but how's your diet? How's your diet? Okay, I'll put it to you another way. You cannot out-train a poor diet. Twinkies win at the end of the day. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Twinkies win. <laughs> Ten years from now, a Twinkie going to be a Twinkie. And if you're a Doomsday prepper, if you're a do Doomsday prepper, just get a whole bunch of Twinkies. They will last through everything. It's, uh, they, they, I'm telling you right now, it's fresh. Ten years later, they still fresh. So my time, l listen, listen. The most profound things, the most profound things in my life have come from my quiet moments with my Savior. Does the Lord know where to find you? When it comes time to reading your Bible, do you have a, do you have a set Bible time? Do you have a set worship time? I want to encourage you set a time, make a date with the Lord. The Lord knows now, now I'm just going to give you a little insight. I won't give you everything, but I'm gonna give you a little insight. The Lord knows every morning, four in the morning, I can pull out my phone and show you right now. I have a group of seven people that I do a Bible study with that we do devos with. And I'm, I'm going to teach you this real quick too. Uh, the Lord knows between 4 and 4.30, and all, this, all these groups know between 4 and 4.30, they will get a Devo from me. Five days a week, Monday through Friday. I give them the weekends off. Aren't I nice? <laughs> hey, weekends. What, what, what am I saying? The Lord knows where to find me. Consistent. Consistent. Uphill goals, downhill habits. Consistent. Consistent. Let me, let me give me something else. You can't approve a habit you've never started. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere, right? So does the Lord, does the, do you have a time that the Lord knows, hey, you and you, 
I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just, can I just throw something out there? It's in the text, okay? Listen, when you approach the text, you got to properly, here's your word, here's your, here's your, here's your $10 seminary word, okay? You got to properly exegete the text. In other words, you got to properly read the text. Don't read into the text, let the text read you. Did it not say he prayed regularly? And did it not say, hey, and in one of those prayers at three in the afternoon. So in other words, can I just put it to you another way? Did God know where to find him at three in the afternoon? Because he did it. What? What's the word? That's it. Faithfulness. Faithfulness has got to be a part of your life. Okay, now watch this. If you want to write something down, you can write this down. So somebody came to me and they said, hey, yo, aunt, if you could point to one hallmark or one thing that has radically changed your life, a spiritual formation, like, like was it worship? Was it, you know, was it a prophetic word? What was it? I'm going to tell you what it was. It was the word of God. The word of God. There's a, there's a rabbi. His name is Rabbi Kakiva. And, and he's a sage. He, he, he was actually during the time of Jesus. They were actually at about close proximity at times. You can read that in the book of Josephus. And, and Rabbi Kakiva was an illiterate uh, Bedouin. In other words, he was a shepherd. He couldn't read or nothing. One day he came across a, a, a dripping piece of water. And this water coming off this rock was dripping onto another stone. And this water was so strong that it literally drilled through the rock. And he felt like, he, he felt like Yahweh, he felt like, well, technically we would call him Hashem, has spoken to him. And this, is, and this is what he said. If the water can penetrate the rock, my word can penetrate your heart. Amen. Never forgot that story. The word of God single-handedly changed my life. Single-handedly. So I've, I've given my life to memorizing and to reading the word. Now watch this. How many of you remember the soap journals? How many remember? How many still soap? Scripture, observation, application, prayer. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm not here. Uh, I actually know the person who started soap, so I'm not here to throw shade and to put them down. I'm just here to give you a, a new way of doing things, okay? So one of the things that we decided to do, if we're going to be faithful in God's word, we got to properly read God's word, okay? So here it is. If you want to write this down, you can. Uh, I'm telling you right now, this. if you like studying the word, this is going to blow your mind, okay? So here it is. We asked the four questions. The four questions, okay? And I'm going to break this down to you. The first question we ask, we read a chapter a day. The first question we ask is this. What does the scripture say about God? So if, if you're thinking along a theological, when I went to seminary, that was before I got kicked out, okay? When I went to seminary, I did. I'm, I'm one of the only people that ever get kicked out of seminary. That's like my badge of honor right there. I got kicked out. It's right through my badge. Okay, so. Check this out. This is, this, is called, this is called the exegeting the text. This is, all falls under the umbrella of hermeneutics, okay? Which just means the study word of God. Now watch this. What does the scripture say about God? So right now we're in the book of Ezekiel. Today's chapter, chapter 8, God was angry. That's what it says. And this is what it taught us. Sooner or later you'll pay for your sin. Do not be worried about the sin you got caught for. Be worried about the sin you haven't been caught for yet. Because it catches up. Those sins you haven't got caught for, that's called compounding. Because the Lord is. And then on one day he's going to go, and you thought you were building idols in secret. And I came in and saw them while you were doing them in secret. Oh, snaps, we're in trouble. Well, you follow me? So what does it say about God? Watch this next question. What does it say about man? Man is an idol producing machine. Man always chooses something over God. Man is evil and man is wicked. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit who helps me to stay on the righteous path. Watch this. How do I apply this scripture to my life? Now, now look, 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 look what I'm doing. Watch this. First two are exegesis. What is the scripture teaching us about God and about us as humans? The third one is called Isia Jesus. In other words, how do I take this, my orthodoxy, and turn it into orthopraxy. In other words, Moses said, Lord, I, I want them to know you and walk in your ways. To know God and to walk in his ways. To know God is the first two questions. To walk in his ways is the third one. Now watch this. Talk about discipleship. Are you ready for this? Now who can I share this with? In other words, if you want something to be internalized into your heart, you need to go teach somebody what God just showed you. Some of you are, and I don't mean this in, a, in an irreverent, disrespectful way, some of you are just damned up. You're all just backed up because you're not sharing the word. You're not, you're not a disciple making disciples. Okay. So, and in other words, if I could give you like a, like a farm analogy, you're bloated. You're like a cow that's bloated. And in order to get you unbloated, we got to get you unplugged. In order to get unplugged, you got to start sharing the word God gives you. So you got to get in those groups. You got to share the word. Does that make sense? Are you tracking me? So you got to be faithful. You got to be consistent. Okay. Now, 
I want to give you something else when it comes to faithful. And, and, and it just, I just want to throw this out there to you. Just something that was in my Devo time the other day. So we went through the book of Matthew about five months ago. And in, in chapter seven, for those of you who like to study the word, I got something for you. This is really crazy. Matthew 7, Jesus goes on this speaking. Uh, he's at the Mount of Beatitudes. And he's just giving like the top 10 sermons. They're incredible. And he ends off with, and those who do the, and those who apply the word, and those who apply the word, and those who apply the word will have their house built on a rock and not on sand. Those who apply the word. And I got to thinking, those who are doers of the word or who are applying the word. And, and I wrote this down. I thought this was interesting. I, I literally wrote it down like this. Is every time he says that, he's always talking about the will of the Father. And watch this. I just, I just surmised it real easy. Put God's word to work in your life. Some of us, we're not seeing the full benefit of what God is able to do because we're not putting God's word to work in our lives. We're putting, a, a, I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but just hear me. It's not rude. Just hear me. We're putting a therapist's words to work but you're not putting God's word to work. Now, I, I, I go to therapy, I, I love my therapist, but she ain't God. There's only one God, and he says there's no other. Remember we sing that song, there's no rival, there's no equal. I mean, we sing it, we might as well believe it, right? Just throwing that out there to all my worship fans, we know, okay. So, okay, just throwing that out there, right? So we put everybody else's words, we put Google's word to work. Well, this is what Google, you know, Google's been wrong. God ain't ever been wrong. I'm okay, just throwing that out there. His word is tested and true. Jesus is, he, well, Jesus is truth. So, you know, remember when Pilate said, what's the truth? And he goes, you tell me. Que es veritas. What's truth? He goes, you're looking at it. That's why Jesus can never tell lies. Even if Jesus was to say something that wasn't untrue, it'd become true. You ever thought about that? Somebody said, Jesus, what color is the sky? He goes, it's purple. Purple rain, baby. Purple rain. There it goes right there. I just want to see if you were listening. That was all. Okay. My point is, my point is, we have to do this. Those who put that word to work, are you putting God's word to work? I love it. Last night, we, 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 we have Bible study uh, every Tuesday. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. I love it when the preacher don't got to preach. So part of it is we have guys get up and we and share their testimonies. I mean, these guys, I mean, listen, I pastor in the hood, y'all. Pastor in the hood. Like, you come to my church, whoo. Like, you don't know who you sit next to. Homeboy kids just got out. Like, you don't know. And you don't know what he got out for. So you better watch yourself, okay? <laughs> so anyway, love my church. Love them. Just great group of guys. We're just building good brotherhood, fellowship, men. And last night, my, my, my guy Jaime was sharing his testimony. This guy, I thought I went through a rough patch. He lost his wife, uh, lost his ability to walk, had to get major back fusion surgery, I mean, just his whole world fell apart, lost it, basically lost his job because of, he woke up crippled one day after he lost his wife to an aneurysm that just came out of nowhere. She was like 46. They have four kids. I mean, just, just the story of all stories. And in the middle of all that, I, I, I'm just sitting there. I mean, I know the story because I literally prayed for him. He had a coworker at the time who was coming to the church. Who would lay, He was laid up in the hospital. She said, I got him on speakerphone. He just wants to pray over the phone. I'm like, we do pray over the phone. God is everywhere. And so, I, you know, anyway, so long story short, he's telling this testimony. Last night, and he told me, part I didn't even know. He said in the middle of basically losing his job and all this, he was reading his Bible. I can't make this up. It, well, we don't film it because it's guy's night. But anyway, I'm just, you got to trust me on this, okay? He gets up, you know what he says? And God said, test me in this. And so I'm leaning, I'm like, ah, that, God only says test me in, in one part of the Bible. And, and he didn't say anything yet. So I'm leaning, I'm like, are you gonna explain? I'm thinking in my head, are you gonna explain that? Because people ain't gonna notice. And he goes, I'm in the worst part ever of myself financially. And God says, test me in this. And he goes, let me explain, guys. It was about tithing. I'm like, bro, you lost your wife. You're paralyzed, literally paralyzed. And, it, and you're about to lose your job. And this is what God wants to say. But it's his testimony. I'm not interfering. I'm sitting like right here leaning in now. And I'm like, he going to tell people this? He lost his wife. And he goes, and I kept hearing the word, test me. And so he goes, you know what I did? From the hospital, I wrote God a tie check. He goes, well, technically I did the push pay because you know we have the app. And he goes, and I said, okay, God, what you going to do? Doctor walks in and says, hey, I know how to fix you. Oh, this gets better. I put the word to work. He goes, you know what? So I told God, you want me to test you? He goes, I was a little angry already for losing my wife, but it's okay. Cause I was just telling God, I was having a moment. 
You guys, you guys ever seen Forrest Gump? I was having, he said, I was having a Lieutenant Dan moment right there. Lieutenant Dan had his moment with God, right? And so, if you're not laughing, Google that one. Okay, so anyway, that's a great part of the movie. And so anyway, he says, he says out of nowhere, he gets an email about a job opening. I can't make this up, y'all. Putting God's word to work. He, I, trust me. You can call one of the guys who were there. They'll tell you I'm verify everything. He says, he goes, he goes, I just put it in. I don't even think I'm going to get it. He goes, I can't even go to the interview. I'm paralyzed in the hospital, waiting on surgery. The nurse comes in. He gets an interview. She dials the phone, lays the phone on his chest because he can't move his hands. Does the interview. And they said, hey, we'll email you and let you know how you did. They emailed him back and said, we want to do a second interview. And he goes, well, I hope it's far out because I got surgery coming. I'm going to be in a walker. I hope it's on the phone. By that time, it's on the phone again. They gave him the job at $35,000 more than what he was making, and he gets to work from home. Oh yeah, you don't gotta clap. I clapped for him, I was dancing up in the aisle for him. I was like, bro, touch me. Like, pray for me. I don't wanna be paralyzed to lose my wife of 35. Come on, somebody. We in inflation right now. Whew, bread is like $7. I'll just take $35, Lord, I don't even need He's telling the guys this testimony. My jaw's on the ground. He goes, and this is what he says. I just put God's word to work. Okay, faithful. Number two, are you available? Are you available? Look at this, look at this, look at this. I'm gonna show you this. Jumping down to verse 23. The next day, Peter started out with him. The next day, Peter started out with him. The what day? The next day. You know what we do? Hey, God, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to catch you tomorrow. And then tomorrow, comes, God, I'm going to get you tomorrow. How many old school gospel people? Tomorrow, I'll serve the Lord tomorrow. How many remember that? Peter said, the next day I'm gone. Look at this now. And some of the believers with him went to Joppa. The following day he arrived at Caesarea. Look at this. Cornelius was expecting them. Cornelius calls together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him, fell to his feet in reverence, but Peter made him get up and said, hey, I too am only a man. Both sets of people were available to what the Lord wanted to do. Real simple question. Can the Holy Spirit interrupt your day? See, you thought you were just going to the grocery store, but you didn't realize as God sent you on assignment so you could buy the groceries of the person who's in front of you. Are you available? See, you thought you was just switching jobs. God said, no, I got got to go put one of my ambassadors over in that place right now because I got somebody I want you to meet. I'll tell you a true story. You ain't going to believe it, but I'm going to tell you. You're not going to believe it. So I'm working out at the gym. This was back in 07 or 08. I bump into this dude. Uh, He's super fit. He's doing these things called kettlebells. They weren't really out and popular yet. I'm like, bro, what is that? And so he's showing me. So we strike up this friendship. Super fit dude. He gets me RKC certified, like all these kettlebell things. We start doing all this crazy stuff, CrossFit, all this stuff, right? This is when I was younger. I'm older now. I don't do that that stuff. So I've learned my lesson. I just, I just got off pectoral surgery. I tore my pec muscle being stupid. Okay, anyway, that's a whole other story. A whole other story. So I meet this guy, and I start sharing the Lord with him. He don't want to hear it. He's living his best life. You, you, anybody here, were you ever a good sinner? I was a good sinner. I don't want to brag about it. I was good at sinning. Like, I, like if you get like a degree in sinning, I, pff, I majored, okay? So my homie, oh gosh, pff, he was worse than me, okay? And so long story short, um, he's, did I tell you he's super fit? I said that already? Okay, so he's like, hey, let's go on the Stairmaster. I'm like, nah, Satan, Stairmaster. See how they rhyme? Like, we ain't doing all that. He goes, let's go on the Stairmaster. So we go on the Stairmaster, so he becomes my workout partner. And one day on the Stairmaster, he's like on level 15, acting like, you know, he's just super fit, like Superman. I'm over here like on level three, looking like a fish out of water, sucking, sucking air through a straw like, like that. You know what I mean? And uh, if you ain't laughing, something wrong with you. That was funny. And so he says to me, he goes, hey, uh, I'm looking for somebody to work in my office. I'm barely breathing. I'm like, bro, What? And then I said to him, you could ask him, his name's Dave. I said, bro, I don't even know what you do. He goes, I'm a farmer. I'm like, farmers have offices? Like, I'm just trying to survive the 15 minutes on the Stairmaster of Satan. You know what I mean? Like, this ain't no stairway to heaven. This is going straight to hell. And and, and he says, yeah, I need an office manager. And and he's just, you know, all happy. I'm barely hanging on. Like, (sighs) 
I said, yo, what are the what are the things you need? And he starts listing all these things. I go, yo, man, like for real? Like my wife can do all that and she's looking for a job. Oh, send her resume. Sends the resume, he hires her. And I'm like, oh, this dude, but he don't go to church, babe. Like, like he out there? <laughs> I can't make this up. I promise you. He'll tell you. Him and his wife can't have kids. My wife said, and my wife, you all know about this. My wife couldn't have kids. Fred Berry in the thrift store. Remember Fred Berry in the thrift store? Uh, what was the thrift store called? One more time, thrift store. My wife was in the thrift store. The assistant pastor at the time, Fred Berry, came up to my wife. He says, God's going to give you kids. Laid his hands on my wife's stomach. She got pregnant. Not kidding. So there's an anointing on my wife. I'm telling you right now. She just, it just happens. She's working for the farmer. She says, I'm going to start praying. Bam, pregnant. After the doctor said, hey, we got to do in vitro. Mm-mm. God said, no, 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 no. We ain't got to do in vitro nothing. So now my wife starts ministering. He gets saved. Born again on fire for Jesus, leading Bible studies. I can't make this up. Calls me today. Calls me. I can't name drop because there's some professional athletes, but I can't name drop. And so he calls me today. He goes, yo, XYZ is back in town. XYZ is training. And believe it or not, I ran into this guy at the airport. I can't make this up. I'm just available. I was in the airport stuck, stranded in Dallas, Texas. We were together. My flight got delayed. I should have stayed at the conference with you. Flight gets delayed. Uh, I, I got I to put all this together and I got very, very little time. Okay, I'm going to put it all together. Connect all the dots. I'm stuck in Dallas, Fort Worth. I see this guy. Um, I, I sit next to him. We're not really talking yet. One of the, one of the guys, he's, he's Hawaiian. He comes up to me. He calls me pastor. When he calls me pastor, the dude looks up and he goes, hey, you a preacher? I said, yeah, what's up? What's good? He goes, you going to Fresno? I go to Fresno. So we start chopping it up. Another guy who's another coach comes walking up with another coach who happens to be Polynesian. I happen to run what's called the Polynesian Pipeline. I go to Hawaii. I get kids from Hawaii to come play football, Fresno City and Fresno State. So we have this whole pipeline going. So I, I kind of know this guy because he knows a guy that I'm with. So he's Samoan. So I say, Tolofa. And so we start chopping it up a little bit. We're having a good time. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. I'm witnessing to this guy. I'm witnessing to this guy. This guy says, hey, can you pray for me? I said, yeah. In the middle of praying for him, I get a prophetic word that his mom's sick. And I said, God's going to heal your mom. He opens his eyes in the middle of the prayer. He goes, how do you know that? And I said, I don't know. I said, Sole. I said, the Lord told me. He goes, Raja that, Pastor. Raja, let's go. So I pray for his mom. He shows up at church next Sunday. Yo. So check this out. The guy I was ministering over here knows my homie, who's my wife's boss, because they work out together. So he's like, hey, yo, your wife's boss always be trying to get me to go to church. So you know what I said? Well, take your butt to church, because you didn't know him like I know him. Went to church two weeks ago, gave his heart to Jesus. Now they're doing Bible studies together. Are you available? Are you available? I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth, mad that my plane is delayed for the 15th time. Don't fly American. Last one. I'm done. Teachable. Okay, now listen. We've had, we've had fun. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I just want you to lean in. As pastors, there's parts of our job that are very hard. And one of the hard parts of pastoring is what we call having the congregation lean in. Lean in. What's that mean, Pastor? We got a generation of people who have been conditioned to popcorn preaching. We don't want to hear sermons about dying to ourselves. We don't want to hear sermons on what it means to be sanctified. Let, let me help you with something. The word holy is mentioned about a dozen times before the word love is ever mentioned in the Bible. Because God, a part of God being loving is His holiness. But you don't hear messages on holiness anymore. You don't hear messages on God is calling you out from the world. What we hear is, how about your best life now? Well, I don't want my best life here. My best life is when I get to heaven. I want to die empty here. And if dying empty means that I've got to, that I've got to give it all away, then I'll give it all away. And so we've raised a generation, and I mean this with all, I know when people say with all due respect, it means I'm going to disrespect you, but I, don't, I mean it with all respect. We've raised a bunch of soft Christians. And so this stuff has entered the, the congregation, not this congregation, but it's entered the capital C church. You hear stuff like this, are you ready? 
well, I'm just not being fed. Can I, can I, can I, just, I, I mean, I have three kids, 23, 21, and 19. They survived, okay? And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I told them one day when they said they was hungry. Came in the house. I'm hungry. You know what I said? Feed yourself. Are we okay? So if you say, well, I'm not being fed, um, well, then feed yourself. Because we're supposed to come here to get equipped to go be salt and light out there. Are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me? Okay. And, and here's the deal. God never called you to be the critic of the church or a consumer of the church. He asked you to be a player in the capital C, in the capital K kingdom, to be a participant. Are you tracking with me? And so, and so when the pastor gets up, we got to remain teachable. Peter says, hey, I learned a lesson here today that God wants to pour out his spirit on the Gentiles too. Because a couple verses before that, he was arguing with God. God, I can't go over there. They're heathens. Can you remain teachable? Because if you remain teachable, sky's the limit for you. Now, listen to me. Let's not do this whole thing. Well, you know, I'm an old dog. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, guess what? You're not a dog and these ain't tricks. This is Bible and God is your savior. So let's not do that. Let's remain teachable. So when pastor gets up here, he says, hey, we're going to do a campaign. We're going to all, we're going to go all in on this, on this Bible series. Lean in. I'm going to do that, pastor. You got it. You got it. When he gets up and he says, hey, we got small groups in the back. We got small groups in the back. Lean in. Say, you know what? I'll be a part of that small group. Don't, don't tell me what's not possible. I know what's not possible. And I know what's possible. And with things, with God, all things are possible. Okay? Listen, this is that lean in moment. In every sermon, in every moment, okay? In every sermon, in every moment, we have a choice. Are we going to lean in? Are we going to lean in and say, okay, Holy Spirit, go ahead, have your way with me. Now, I will openly confess that this is the hardest part. It's the hardest part, even for pastors. It's hard. But if you will stay moldable, then God's going to take you to where you've never been before. It's going to be incredible. I promise you. Will you be that fat disciple? Will you be that person who says yes? I know for me, I just want to say yes. So when the pastor gets up here and he says, hey, we, we have opportunities to serve in the church. All right, I'll do it. Can I, can I show you something? And you'll never forget this, I promise you. The largest doors swing on the smallest hinges. Your largest blessings are going to come from what seems like very small opportunities to serve. That's it. What giant door does God want to open up on the other small side of that hinge called a yes? God, I'm available and I'm teachable. I'll do what you ask me to do. Does that make sense? May we be faithful. May we be available. May we be teachable.